The journey to the championship finale makes the trek out west to visit a track not seen in several years, ready to challenge the 14 runners with the first and only road course race of the postseason. Not far from Napa Valley, California, we welcome you to the virtual Sonoma Raceway, the site of the fifth race in the season six four wide racing TJ's Team Series playoffs. Welcome to the action on the Cable and Racing Network as we continue to log every race down into Homestead of Miami where alongside Francisco Bacchiao in the booth, I'm Kenneth Bueno. Francisco, the four wide racing series is no stranger to road course events. We've had many of them over the long history of this since June of 2020. What's the biggest thing in mind for the drivers as they take on a playoff fight that continuously evolves and a track that we haven't seen in a very long time? And for almost the entirety of the field, it is truthfully their first experience here in this league. And it is going to be very interesting how these guys tackle this racetrack. Sonoma Raceway is not a forgiving racetrack, Kenneth. There is dead grass all over here. And if you go wide, you're going off the track and you're probably going to lose a lot of time. There's some big curves that you can really hit and make the car turn better, but it could also launch you off the racetrack. So, so many twists and very little passing opportunities. Your main goals are to see if you can get a pass done into turn seven or into turn 11. Those are gonna be the two keys for these guys here tonight to make passes on this not forgiving racetrack. And you see the schedule there, Kenneth, just four races after today at Dover, Pocono, Phoenix, and then that championship finale at Homestead Miami Speedway. And these guys are gonna be looking to try and make sure they still have a chance by the time that Miami rolls around. The big thing about the rest of this postseason schedule is that you've got a lot of different tracks in the mix. Sonoma tonight, then Dover, Pocono, Phoenix, and of course, that championship finale, like you said, at Homestead. It's crunching down. You don't have a lot of time left before we get to decide a season six champion. But one driver that's getting inching a little closer to a four-wide title this season is Kyle Benson, the Williamsport, Pennsylvania native, grabbing a huge win at the Daytona International Speedway last Wednesday. Here are his words after the monumental victory. Oh my god, Kenneth. Holy crap. Um, well, I threw one of them patented Mikey Waltrip half blocks down the back stretch, and I just was kind of holding on, and I knew I had Dallas Shire, and I threw the block Dallas Shire, and I somehow had enough run to got to the line, and that was probably the most flamboyant I've ever won a race before. Um, it was something, man. Um, I haven't won in a super speedway race in like a long time, so finally got that. I haven't won a race in a while. And finally get one off my back, man, in the playoffs. I knew a lot of trouble with the uh, playoff guys. So I just knew I had to show up when it mattered. And, you know, it came home with a W. For Benson, his first win of the season coming in dramatic fashion. It was a three-wide run to the start-finish line. Him, his teammate Austin Reedy, and Adam Alishire. What a finish it was, Francisco. We had not that many cars left in the waning laps, but this was a big win for Benson. His first win since the Charlotte Roval in Season 5. And talking to Benson, he even didn't expect the move he made to the outside to win him the race, as it wasn't a move to win the race. It was a move to block that 91 of Alishire. And it just happened to be the move that got him into victory lane, snapping that win the streak going back to the Charlotte Roval last season. So for Benson, getting his first one of the season does him a lot. As you see, they're going into the point standings. It now puts him just five points behind Lawson Peel going into this race. You see the other main championship contenders there, Ethan Fonseca, Moreno, just 11 points behind. He's looking to try and close in on his home racetrack. His teammate, Jaden Porter, is down in the fifth position, 25 points behind. And from there on down, Kenneth, a lot of those guys have a lot of work to do if they want to keep their championship hopes up. But for two guys in particular, which you see with asterisk marks there, they are not here tonight for a fact. They are both enjoying a lovely vacation. But that, unfortunately, for Eric Schaefer is going to mean he was probably going to lose out on this championship battle as he's going to fall into the clutches of just outside the top 10, maybe barely in it, but still with four races to go, it might not be enough for Schaefer to be able to come back from that deficit. We wish Schaefer and Murray safe travels throughout this weekend on the cruise that they're going to be on. But of course, for Schaefer, it's going to be a pretty significant blow as we get the end of this Sonoma race through and then head on to Dover. Schaefer's going to really have to play catch up in for his championship pursuit, it might just be a dagger just based on the amount of points that those drivers behind and in front will gain on the three car. We'll keep an eye on the entire field and how the point standings will shake out after it is all said and done here tonight from Sonoma. But because Schaefer and Murray are not here tonight, some big storylines before we take the green 
flag. Let's look back, though, at some of the history we've had in the four wide racing series at road courses. We're going to start with season five. We had four road course races in last season's campaign for the four wide series. Francisco, a lot of them, we cut it down to about half of that in season six. We start with Watkins Glen, where Lawson Peel, the season four champ, started 24th in that race, clawed his way all the way through the field and got the win in great fashion, dominating near the end and getting the best of the 96 of Austin Reedy right behind him, celebrating with his teammate Joe Sanchez. And we knew Lawson Peel was a super strong road course driver, saw the success in Watkins Glen, but then saw the downfall in the run to run, turn five at Road America, goes for the spin as he loses control of the race car, under braking. Behind him was Daniel Mitchell, the Los Angeles, California native, trying to catch up then on the run up to turn six francisco peel off again boy we were out of our seat during this moment michelle getting by the season four champion and crossing the line to what would be so far his first and only four wide racing win the ups and downs of racing and back-to-back -back road races there for loss of peel getting the win and then that unfortunate sort of circumstances that happened to him at uh road america and then here at coda just comes up short on the fuel mileage game to colin forrester was able to hold him off and get his only road course win in the series or at watkins glen was won by brandon hawken it was his first four wide racing series win and it came at the left and right hander up in new york in dominating fashion there from the pole position but looking back at our trends, Kenneth, we had a lot of road racing action with our Gen 7 Next Gen Cup cars. But so far this season with the Xfinity cars, we've only had one. We'll only have this one to close off the season. So there's not been many opportunities for guys to get accustomed to the car and turning left and right, especially at a track like this, which really you don't drive this car that here that often anyways. And this track, of course, has its unique set of challenges with all of the elevation and with the sun out here in Sonoma, California, it gets hot. So it's going to be even harder for these drivers to really master it. And everyone's still chasing Brandon Hawkins, that one of one from the road courses as he led every single lap from one all the way to 55 up in New York. So about a minute and a half before we get to the track side to get you through the starting grid for tonight's playoff race at Sonoma Raceway. Before we do that, Francisco, let's get a new feature, a new POV here on the Cable and a Racing Network of what it's like to race here in Sonoma, California. Why don't we get through a full lap around this 1.949 mile road course. We'll start on the start finish line. What's it like to drive here, Francisco? Well, the start straight is not straight at all. You're constantly turning and you're braking going uphill here. You want to stay on the left side and then sharply get it to the right. You want to get your right front on that curve. It really helps to turn. You see sand on either side. So you want to avoid the very edge of the racetrack. Get close to it. Clip this curb right here. Stay on the left hand side and then turn it back to the right. As you reach this crest, the rear end wants to slide. You want to go off the racetrack, but you keep it inbounds. Hard braking going into turn four. You want to miss that big curb and let the car go out next to that wall. Don't want to hit it though. And then here's one of your first opportunities on the lap to make a pass. It's into turn seven, a very sharp hairpin. And then it leads on to the S's. As you prepare here, you go pretty much half throttle through this whole section. Then it's a bit of in and out of the throttle here, flicking the car left and right. It wants to slide everywhere. And then right here, as you crest right there, the rear end wants to slide, constantly controlling the throttle here as you're approaching the fastest part of the racetrack. Some pretty medium braking here as you want to get as tight to the apex as you can there for turn 10 to set yourself up for the last opportunity to pass on this lap in turn 11. A sharp hairpin, slowest corner on the racetrack, a 180 degree turn. You want to get it right close to that tire barrier without cutting the racetrack. And then you go back to the start finish straight to complete a lap around this challenging racetrack. I can tell you I tried my best lap, but even then I'm still multiple seconds off of the best drivers. Oh, you did good series. though. I tried. I tried my best. It was a lot of fun <laughs> putting those practice laps in. And as we get through the rest of these playoffs, we'll try to give you more of an insight of what it's like to be behind the wheel. Again, this is the first time we see the Xfinity Series cars at center stage for this series in a very long time, if not ever. So these guys are still getting acclimated to the use of these Xfinity Series machines. And especially here at a brand new road course in Sonoma, just how much that is going to be of mind for these guys in the field. We've got everybody trackside though alongside the start finish line for our first race at Sonoma in just over three years in this series. We'll get you through the starting grid here for the fifth race of the four wide racing TJ's team series 
playoffs where on the pole is the Watkins Glen winner who else but the 98 of Brandon Hawkins he will lead the field to green alongside playoff runner Ethan Fonseca Moreno in his number 21 Chevrolet he'll round out row number one the first two drivers to see the green flag Daniel Mitchell, the season five Road America winner will start inside in row two from third and then there's the Watkins Glen winner from last season Lawson Peel looking to get another road course victory that's from the second row Luke Knup rejoins the field. The driver out of Peoria, Arizona comes back to action. He'll line up fifth with Daytona winner Kyle Benson on his outside in P6. Joe Sanchez rolls the 55 off from seventh place on the starting grid. Outside of him in row four will be the 99, the Florida driver of Colin Forrester. Rounding out your top 10, Lance Hill in the one machine and Craig Launslager in the number 13. Ryan Pandishu just misses out in the top 10 starting in 11th with AJ Green, former champion of the series, in the 12th spot. Trevor Haley, will rookie, will be in the 13th position with Craig Rowe making his first start of the season here in the 14th position. Brandon Banks will roll off from 15th, a deep start for him with Adam Alishire in 16th after finishing third and that three wide finish at Daytona. Jaden Porter, not the start he was hoping for to try to make gains for that championship lead, rolling off 17th with Nicholas Vizzuti in the 18th position and rounding out your 10th row of the grid is Jesse Freeze in that zero and Kevin D'Elia in the 20th spot. Back in 21st is the rookie Craig Parks in the number 17. He is flanked by Michael Nubra at the exit of row number 11. Row 12 will feature Austin Reed. He's the first driver not to take a qualifying time. He'll have to work hard through the field tonight with Curtis Kelly in the 71 on his outside in 24th. Patrick Thompson, a playoff driver, also having a lot of work to do from 25th. Tony Kivett will be on his outside in 20th. 26th position. Then the two in row number 14, Cody Kinsey in the two, Daniel Moore in the 77 with Christopher Bishop rounding out our 29 car field on the inside of row 15. Well, we mentioned being near Napa Valley and in the west side of the country in Sonoma, California. Under the sun, Francisco, it's not as hot as we would anticipate, only at 87 degrees, but the winds are strong, about 12 to 13 miles to the west-northwest. And I figure Ethan is probably very familiar with that kind of weather. He doesn't live that far from the San Francisco Bay Area. So this is right up a, a, just a, a couple minute drive there from San Jose, California. And it, it is getting down to that part of the season, Kenneth. We're in October in Sims. So that fall weather is really starting to play an impact when it matters most for these guys to make that drive for the championship. And here tonight, we're going to have a competition caution at the start of lap number 20. As soon as the leader hits lap number 20, they will throw a competition caution. The pits will close starting lap 18. So it's going to be very crucial to get some track position. But your race is not over by a mistake here in this first stint as you do have a second opportunity. But the field is going to be in the hands of the 21 and the 98 as we get to get ready for road racing. Here we go. Brandon Hawken and Ethan Fonseca Moreno will bring us our first green flag at Sonoma since June of 2020. We are playoff racing from Sonoma, California. And Hawken gets an excellent jump right off the bat to solidify himself in the top position. Ethan Fonseca under fire from the 25 of Daniel Micho, who got a pretty decent start lining up in third. There you see the 21 and the 25 side by side. Fonseca is going to clear out into the second spot. And there's Luke up immediately trying to put fire and pressure on Lawson Peel as they're running side by side through this hill section. Micho goes wide and opens the door for Lawson Peel going down into turn four. Peel will take the third spot with Knup trying to follow him through. Knup almost physically used up the 25 of Michel coming out of turn 4A and now going through this second right-hander. A little bit tighter here as we get through the S's part of the course. Kyle Benson and Michel going at it. That 25 car has plummeted back to sixth. As of the moment, there goes the 38 by, wiggling on through AJ Green. Oh, spin in the back. Big trouble there. Got into the curbing and jumped up high before landing on all four wheels. He's going to keep the car collected. They have single filed out from about 11th on back with the field chasing. The 98 of Brandon Hawkins was pulled out to about a second and a half of an advantage through turn 11. We had a spin in the back of the field, Kenneth. And it might have been Craig Launslager in the 13. He has dropped to 26th position. There he is sitting behind Christopher Bishop and in front of the 77 of Daniel Moore. We'll see if we can line up that replay for you in just a moment. Adelshire, oh, Adelshire. is in trouble as well right behind getting into the pit road tires. And turn 11, heavy damage Look at that to the damage. rear end. 
Well, that was an active lap one. <laughs> Here's a look at Alistair running here. behind his teammate, Curtis Kelly. And I don't know what happens here. He's under braking. Oh, he gets hit oh. by Craig Parks and hard into the tire barrels he goes. He's lucky that car is still running with how hard it hit that uh, attenuator wall there on the left side where all the advertising is. He's able to keep going. Lounge Slugger had a spin further back in the field. I believe he got loose exiting turn seven. And, it, and he just gets in the curbs. You're racing a couple cars. You're trying to put the throttle down. And right here, just gets loose, trying to get as much throttle as he could and overcorrects it. Fortunately for him, no damage, no contact with anything. He's going to be hoping for that lap 20 caution as soon as possible. And look how close AJ Green was to some tire barriers through the S's as he made the contact with Launslogger. And they both got out of shape. Launslogger, though, is going to stay put without any damage. He has progressed to 24th place, but the largest hit going to Adam Allishire here in the opening two laps, while Hawken has pulled away to about 2.6 seconds of an advantage over Ethan Fonseca Moreno. It's pretty close from around third on back. It's only about half a second from Lawson Peel to the Arizona driver of Luke Knup, who makes his return to the four wide racing TJ's team series. Francisco, we weren't sure whether we were going to see this 45 car back in action. He had forfeited his playoff spot just before we dropped the green flag at Chicagoland. So we sort of knew that potentially he could have been a champion in this series. It would have been in the top five in points had he been running in the playoffs. But of course, has a lot of real life commitments with jumpy trucks in real life. So great to see Luke Knup back in action at a road course and already running quite well for himself. I mean, he's been a solid road racer the entire time. We've we've known Luke Knup, Kenneth, and it's no surprise to see him up in the front right now. Certainly trying to see if he can gain a couple positions. Has Lawson Peel in front of him, he's, and he's still fighting for something. Obviously, he wants to win the race, but Bakaya Bueno Racing has a job to do in that owner's championship, and Luke Knup wants to deliver for that team and his team to try and see if he can help them advance into that championship finale. All of them single file. Benson, of course, with the win at Daytona, only five points shy of Peel. So as much momentum as he can gain at Sonoma, he would like. But he's got a mirror full of Joe Sanchez, a fellow drinking bros racing Chevrolet. These seven cars have pulled away from everyone else. A pretty sizable gap before you get to Colin Forrester, who holds on to eight. Right in front of Ryan Pandisho in the 63, then Lance Hill. And then Trevor Haley back to 11th. AJ Green and Jaden Porter who has moved up to 13th. Pretty good progress early on in tonight's race. There he is, the 28 right behind the 48 and an onboard look going up the hill. Yeah, it, it's a very steep climb going up to turn two there. It, it feels like you're climbing multiple buildings just from how steep it is. And there you see Porter following Green as they jump through the curves. And Jaden Porter's done a pretty decent job. He started 17th. He's already gained a couple of positions. Uh, he gained four, I believe, in the opening lap, but hasn't since. But he, he's following in a train right now, trying to see if he can size up an opportunity to get past each of these cars one by one, because that's what it takes. You have to have patience. It's a 60 lap race and you have to have patience. You see a moment there for Trevor Haley. AJ Green can't capitalize, but Porter's going to give himself that gap just so he doesn't get involved in anything, trying to see if he can set himself up for turn 11. AJ Green right on the back bumper of the Indiana driver in Trevor Haley. A brand new icy scheme on his Ford Mustang and a brand new change to the Ford Mustang in general on the iRacing platform. Finally, they have implemented uh, the new Dark Horse Mustang decals on the front end of these cars in the Xfinity series. So it kind of threw some drivers for a loop. We we'll had to sort of alter their paint schemes to accommodate for that new Dark Horse look at the front end of the Ford. So Trevor Haley sporting the new decals along with a brand new paint scheme with Icy on the car and actually a Stuart Haas Racing number four font for Haley who continues to try and rebound through the playoffs in his first four wide racing TJ's team series postseason appearance with AJ Green right behind him. It appears everybody Francisco has separated. Most of the gap between drivers sits at about a second, maybe a second and a half. Not much going down, but just probably what we expected five laps in. Everybody getting into their rhythms and making sure they can run laps at Sonoma, let alone fast ones. You're right about that, absolutely. Especially in the early stages, you wanna be able to make sure you can even stay on the racetrack. Then you start to worry about who you're going to battle and what positions you're trying to aim for. That's why you see a lot of separation right now, only five laps into this race. And we know, of course, no, we had that competition caution on lap 20. So these guys, I think, are just trying to manage and see where they're at, what they're able to do, what they're not able to do between now and then. And then once we get that caution, as Michel has a slide into turn 11, trying to see where, the, where that limit is. That way, when they get that restart, 
after that competition caution, they're able to push just that little bit more and try to see if they can find that edge. And I feel that caution is going to make for an interesting opportunity for st potential strategy calls. Kenneth, we documented how pits will close at the start of lap 18. As soon as that leader hits the start finish line, the pit lane will close at the hands of Austin Reedy, who is going to be our race control here tonight since Tyler Murray's out. That's when the pit lane will close. And anybody who wants to come to pit road has to do it before that point. And it's going to be a big difference from Watkins Glen just because we didn't have those cautions. So you've got really an interesting strategy point, and it's really going to ch shave off the halves of these races entirely, make these drivers have a little bit of a different outlook on how they can attack the first half of this race versus the rest of it. Closest battle on track is for ninth place, Ryan Pandicio looking to hold on to position over Lance Hill. Then, of course, AJ Green and Jaden Porter currently in a fight with Trevor Haley. He's going to get by the four car entering the hard braking zone and that right hander so through the s's Jaden porter will grab another spot really good progression out of the louisville kentucky native early on and it's something that he really needs francisco especially as he sits behind eric schaefer in the point standings by eight so while schaefer's not here while he's on the cruise porter is able to work hard here at sonoma and way sideways out of the penultimate corner entering turn 11 but this aggression early is paying off all of those points he can gain on the three car to weave himself further inside the top five in points. Absolutely. It just builds that gap to be able to solidify himself in the top five. But at the end of the day, Kenneth, we know each one of these guys are looking for two specific people, and that's the drivers of the 12 and the 38, as they're the top two in points. They're only five points apart. So Ethan Fonseca, Jaden Porter, and even Brandon Banks down in the sixth position in the standings, they're looking to try and beat that 12 and 38. He's keeping a keen eye on A.J. Green and Ryan Pandusio because they're starting to get closer and closer with each turning lap. They remain behind Lance Hill and, of course, Colin Forrester, but Pandusio really had to play some steady defense there against A.J. Green going up the hill. Well, it turns ones through three. And now into the sharp corner. A.J. Green is right on the rear bumper. It's all about just making the decision on when to go for the pass. The S is probably really the best place to do it unless the driver makes a mistake. So you're looking at maybe the penultimate corner, then turn 11 is a hard braking zone. AJ Green as a driver, Francisco, how patient do you have to be at Sonoma to make a pass when you're right on the back bumper of a guy like this? Extremely patient. You have to be patient on road courses in general, but it's certainly a track that's not forgiving like this one. You have to play it more, you have to play it safer than what you normally would just because there's no room for error. Yes, there's going to be pace difference and it'll show in the long run, but you can't force a move, not here. You either damage your race car, go off the track, and it just hurts you even more than trying some uh, bodacious move down the inside or around the outside. So you have to be very patient, hope a mistake out of the 63, and just hope that you're close enough and have enough of a run to capitalize on that moment. That's what it takes around here. You have to hope for a mistake, but you also have to put yourself in the right spot to capitalize on said mistake. We'll look through 10th. We'll monitor that as we move forward. Green a little loose, but so far, everyone's still behind Brandon Hawken, who continues to balloon his gap to Ethan Fonseca Moreno back in second. Francisco already eight laps in. It's six seconds. That's the distance between the 98 and the 21. So for Hawken, he continues his road course prowess like he did at Watkins Glen, which was straight up domination for his first career four wide racing TJ's team series win. He led every single one of the 55 laps held in upstate New York. So Hawken just turning onto the next page and doing what he does best at these left and right circuits here at Sonoma, straight up dominating nine laps through. Had the grand slam at Watkins Glen and he's trying to do it again here for the road course sweep. Never had a road course sweep in this series. Brandon Hawken trying to be the first and Right now, looking deeper in the field for position inside the top five. That's Daniel Michaud after that poor start, getting the position on the 45. The 45 to the inside as they go up to turn three. This is an odd part of the racetrack to be side by side. You see the 25 is going to back out momentarily, but he knows that he has some speed. And he's going to back, back down the inside going into turn four. The 45 is going to try and stay with him, but ultimately, Michaud's going to get by. It's a hard place to make the pass, but Michel dove in and Luke Knup had to back out. Michel, the faster car, a bit loose there and a little wide in this corner here. He's going to make it work, though, so Luke Knup will remain behind this 25 car of Michel. And these, by the way, are a pair of non-playoff drivers. You see Luke Knup with a blue TJ's team banner on his Supra, but that was before we 
had the news that he was going to forfeit his playoff spot. So don't be fooled. This 45 car not in the run for the postseason this evening, but a driver who's running for the championship behind him is Kyle Benson. Sees two of those spots ahead and is probably thinking Francisco free real estate, but just has to hold on from Joe Sanchez who deals him the bumper in turn 11. Joe Sanchez trying to be aggressive and take some positions here. That's a teammate of your of the championship contender that the 38 is racing with. So obviously uh, Joe Sanchez probably aware of the situation isn't trying to do anything crazy, but just certainly see if he can take the spot away from the 38 to help his teammate on that front. A look on board from the front bumper of Kyle Benson. There's the gap about a second up the road to Lucan up as they go up the hill off of these blue and yellow curves that really kicked this car up and I really love Francisco the run here into the tight turn 4a you can carry some speed into it but you've got all these curves around you and when you slam onto that right side curve this car goes up for a huge angle maybe 45 degrees that it's up only on the left side tires it's such a cool angle and probably one of the coolest angles in all of NASCAR you put that camera right on the tire barriers at the exit of turn 4a and you've got fast speeds number one but you've also got some jumpy race cars number two yeah, and Lightning McQueen would certainly approve of that, as we know that's his signature move, getting up on two <laughs> tires and with the right sides up against the wall. They don't have the right sides up against the wall, but they have them in the air, hanging loose, and just trying to make lap time that way. And uh, speaking of making lap time, your leader's putting down so fast of laps that he's already catching the tail end of the field to put cars a lap down. You see just in front of him, that's a lap car. And that means that he's going to have to navigate his way around traffic. How easy will the traffic be willing to let him go? And how does it affect the gaps as they work their way through the field? There you see it's the 77 of more just in front of Brandon Hawk and how easy does he make this pass? It, we know that there's that pace difference, Kenneth, but at the end of the day, you catch him in a bad spot and it costs you time. In, ha in Hawkins' case, it, will, it shouldn't affect him as he does have that big lead, but it could happen later in the race when you're in a situation where you can't afford to lose said time and it ends up happening. So learning how to navigate traffic at this point in the race is important in case you can counter it later. Look on board with Hawken as he catches up to that slow 77 of Daniel Moore. This is going to the S's, fastest part of the racetrack. You make this right-hander before the entrance of turn 11. Look how sideways Moore is, but Hawken catches him at a really good point in the racetrack. That little intermission period between that fast right-hander and then turn 11, this slow hairpin that you got to be very sure of and get those right side tires right on that curbing and really close to those tire barrels, but you don't really hit them exactly and more getting out of the way in due time. Now it's all about Francisco, how the driver seven seconds back is gonna get around this 77 car and where? Where's gonna be important, especially because Lawson Peel's not that far behind. And though Ethan's done a good job at this stage of the race and keeping that uh, 12 car behind him, he knows that just finishing one spot in front of him probably isn't gonna help him all that much in the point standings. He has to hope for either a race win or that that 12 car loses positions yes it's helping him that he's ahead but it's not going to do him much help he was 11 points back this this if they were to finish this way it would probably cut it to single digits but again he's gonna have to hope for something more if he wants to make that big impact going into dover a track that he's been pretty good at in the past and both of these guys last week at daytona international speedway were some of those that were so willing to hang in the back for the entirety of it lawson peel did push the envelope several times but them both just wanted to hang back and wait for the chaos to tell them the full story and throughout all of what went down in the waning laps and through all of those restarts coming to the checkered flag Moreno ended up finishing fifth while Peel despite everything that went down recovered for a seventh place finish so it could have been much worse for these two and most notably for Lawson Peel who we thought was going to be out of the race at one given moment but all that has enabled these two drivers to get a little closer in point standings. And then when you add Kyle Benson into the mix, it gets even closer. We come into this race with 17 points spread between the top four. But you really think about 11 points, Francisco, that's on tap for Moreno Benson. And then, of course, your championship leader in Peel in order to catch up. So these points through the first half of the race is really going to matter here because Moreno and Peel, as long as they get close together, I mean, it's only going to keep Peel's lead intact for the championship as they get closer to Daniel Moore. And we hear it so much from Jeff Burton and Steve Letarte, Kenneth, but it's incredibly true. It's the fact that there's going to be moments in these playoffs where it determines the championship outcome, and you don't know it. There you see the 77 or more getting way out, out of the way to allow these two to go by. 
But there's going to be moments that determine this championship battle. And you, th you think back to previous races. You go back to Rockingham, the move that the that the 21 made to try and win that race against Lawson Peel. It ended up costing him roughly seven or so positions on the finish in that day. And that is probably what's keeping him from being the points leader right now when you consider the way everything else has worked out uh, on that particular day, Kenneth. So just thinking about those kind of days, and then you also consider Lawson Peel with the trouble he had and the recovery effort he was able to have to get back up into a top 10 finish. It's things like that that help you make a championship run. Here's the defending champ working really hard to get around a pair of Toyota Supras. Had to work by Ryan Pandicio up the hill and he got the 63 into the sand on the outside. And here pouncing is AJ Green in the number 48 machine. We'll see if he dives in at the entrance of turn 11. He's going to peek the nose in there, but he's not going to make the pass attempt on the 63 of Pandicio. Meanwhile, Trevor Haley and Craig Rowe going blow for blow. The two Ford Mustangs bearing the exact same paint scheme and just one number apart, four and five. This is the first race of the four wide racing TJ Steam Series for Rowe, making his debut tonight at Sonoma and doing a pretty good job of it. Ran pretty fast laps in practice and so far the five car sitting in 13th and gonna run right behind Trevor Haley. We can only assume those two are either friends or very close teammates at most running nose to tail as AJ Green continues to put the stick up to Ryan Pandicio. And that's a spotter's worst nightmare for Haley and Rowe. Yeah. Exact same paint scheme and the colored numbers. Oh boy, that would be troublesome to try and uh, be able to distinguish. But fortunately, I don't think anybody's spotting for those two here tonight. So that's not an issue. But on board here, as you're watching AJ Green trying to chase down Pandicio and further up, Joe Sanchez also right up on the back bumper of Luke Knup. So Luke Knup, after a strong start in this race, is starting oh, to slip back and up. he gets into the wall. He gets into him, entering turn 11. Kyle Benson is right behind all of this, momentarily three wide. Benson gonna move to the inside. This is fresh out of the final corner. Luke Knup is still there and he's not done yet. Making some minor contact as they go through the front straightaway. He's gonna get into the 55. As they climb up the hill now, here comes the 38, trying to see if it can take the spot. Here's Lukanov still to the inside. Sanchez sliding the rich eyes. He's going to spin Kyle Benson. This is a nightmare for Kyle Benson. The pair of non-playoff drivers getting into him. Benson looking to re-emerge on the racetrack safely. He gets back on the racetrack. There goes Lance Hill. There's another spot gained for Jaden Porter. A nightmarish entrance to turns one and two for Kyle Benson. We'll get a second look at it. And that goes all the way back to turn 10 when we saw the, four, the 45 and the 55 having that battle. You saw Nup had a, a rather poor exit off of that corner and allowed Sanchez to try and make a move. So here's the 38 as they go through and there you see the 45 slides through and it gives the outside to the 55. Sanchez tries to cut back but just gets into Luke Nup and he's very lucky not to hit the actual end of the pit attenuators hits the side of it is able to stay going in the forward direction with minimal damage benson sees the opportunity goes to the inside and at this point he's trying to see if he can get ahead of these two that way he's not in this battle but of course as we saw as they go up through turn one he stays on the inside i think sanchez probably trying to put the power down to stay to front of the 45 gets loose and ends up sending that 38 around benson who goes up the track and then sanchez who goes down into him nothing that benson can do there and at this point he's just awaiting his entry back to the racing surface safely. The last thing he wants is to get hit by someone else. And there was Lance Hill, there was Jaden Porter. And as a result, Kyle Benson has dropped to ninth place. He still remains in touch with Jaden Porter and Lance Hill for eighth and seventh. But what a blow that is for Kyle Benson. Of course, five points shy of the championship leader going into tonight. That is really the last thing he wanted to have happen. Just non-playoff drivers getting into it and chippy into the final corners and then as you crest over the new lap Benson getting turned the good news is no damage on his cheese it Ford Mustang and he does gain this place on Jaden Porter I think also what's important to think about in that instance Kenneth is it's not so much about the positions lost because yes he only really lost one maybe two spots there but he was right behind those guys on the racetrack if he gets in front as as Lawson Peel's gonna hit the pit lane here on lap 17, just remember we were talking about that strategy. As soon as the 98 hits the start finish line, pit lane is closed. And Lawson Peel decided to hit the pit lane. He's the furthest car running up 
that is going to take this strategy. So we'll see who follows into the pit lane, who tries that strategy of pitting before the comp caution, staying out and having uh, the track position here on the restart. We know that he's pretty quick, so we'll just have to see how that works out for him. Here's Jaden Porter deciding to follow him on that strategy. Not a bad move for Jaden Porter. He gained a couple of spots, but is looking to try and have track position to his advantage. Let's see, when we get back to the line, Brandon Hawken right now has just over eight and a half seconds on Ethan Fonseca Moreno. That's right on the cusp of probably being able to get to the pit lane entry since turn 11 is that slow, but I don't think the 21 is close enough to, able to, to be able to pit on this lap. So there's the 98. He's going to work his way around turn 11, and that 21 should be coming off the corner now. So it's going to be very close. Does he decide to go in the pit lane? The answer is no. He's going to follow the 98 of Brandon Hawken. So Porter and Peel, both of them coming in at lap 17 as Brandon Hawken goes across the start finish line. Pit lane will be closed, which means nobody else will come in, and then we'll have our caution two laps after that. So Peel and Porter looking for a bit of the track position. And I imagine, Francisco, this is really the only way at this juncture that you can beat Brandon Hawken. If you cannot beat him outright on pace, we mentioned it so many times that throughout our shows this season and even seasons prior that the only other alternative to deal a one-two punch is come down pit road earlier, make an alternative strategy call in order to gain the track position out of caution or whatever cyclists throughout is watch Trevor Haley, Ryan Pandishu, AJ Green, this trio in front of the 12 car in Lawson Peel crossing to what's going to be lap 19. You know, that's what you got to do if you're either the 28 or the 12. And I'm sort of surprised, Francisco, we didn't see many more drivers come in. Are you surprised as well? I agree. I thought we would see more cars try this strategy, but I think most of them were concerned that the 98 is just that fast, that they, it probably won't matter which strategy they go to. So they're just hoping to run this thing out. And considering how few cars decided to do the strategy, Kenneth, even though the tire difference won't be that glaring, in the long run, the, the rear tire is going to make a difference on the 12 and the 28. As soon as we get a couple laps after that restart, I expect that 98 to pound them on the restart and try to make those passes and I think Ethan Fonseca when he gets that chance to be right behind the 98 of Hawken is going to try the same thing that's going to be his opportunity because again the goal for the 21 here today is to beat that 20 uh, to beat the 12 and to beat the 38 that's his goal here today here's Peel getting around the eighth place car Ryan Pandicio waiting patiently through turns 10 and now 11 of course, these guys can't come down pit road. Peel is going to have some fresher tires. Not by much, though. It's all about how he can save the Goodyear Eagles he's got. He's going to dive underneath Pandicio for position. Clean pass for Peel. Going to move up to eighth. And there's AJ Green not too far away in the distance. So our lap 19. And one lap away from our midway caution break. Here at lap number 20, which should give around 40 laps for these drivers to get to the end at lap 60. And that will open up the pit road strategy books once more. As here is Hawken going into turn 11. There's the rookie, Craig Parks. Should give him way, but he's going to run the inside lane. Hawken not going to use up any space that's really close to that 17 and isn't going to push the issue. He'll come out of the final corner, cross the start finish line. Brandon Hawken will lead the way to the halfway mark, lap 20. This will be where the caution comes out by race control. There it is, Brandon Hawken leading the entire way through. And now we get to see how pit road fares for everyone. And then what Porter and Peel do in the process and how they react on the restart. Very important, and this goes to playoff drivers or non-playoff drivers. No penalties on pit road. You get a penalty here and you lose a bunch of track position. If that happens under green, you might not lose as much time, but still certainly you don't want to do any mistakes here you want to just have a nice solid entry and make sure you can exit with decent track position and we'll see what happens with the strategy call by the 12 and the 28 when we do go back green there's hawken picking up the iRacing official pace car which in the road course sense is a porsche not the typical iRacing sedan that we've been accustomed to seeing on the oval side of things a bit of a change of scenery as we're here in sonoma california and right behind brandon hawken the driver who's a lap down is Patrick Thompson in the 88 car. Started pretty deep in this field, Francisco, and I'd imagine that tonight's race isn't going the best way for him. He comes into tonight 43 points off of the championship leader, sitting behind Brandon Banks, Shade and Porter, and the like. Being a lap down here at this caution break, lap 20, maybe isn't the best news he 
could be on the lucky dog position. However, we really don't know if Thompson will for sure get his lap back. And this race, like Thompson and for many others, might just push them out of championship contention. Thompson, though, is going to stay out because he has to. Brandon Hawkins, Moreno, and the rest of the lead lap cars are going to enter pit road. And such the advantage of lap cars between Hawken and the 21 is that look at the gap he has to Ethan. And then even from those two all the way back to third, look at the gap they have all the way back further on. So it's just a huge gap in track position that they have to cars for position. And they're going to get an opportunity to have a nice solid entry. There's no reason to make a mistake when you have that, a position secure like that. You just come in, stay well under the speed limit. And make sure you go into your box nice and easy. Don't slide them. Just make sure you nail it and you exit where, exactly where you came in. As that's most likely what's going to happen with this duo up in the front. You see the Jacks now getting down. And away your top two go. Holding on. And that should cycle out just about everybody. There you see Daniel Micho on the racetrack right now. Stayed out. Perhaps also was one of those drivers to pit Kenneth. As we wait for the running order to fully cycle out here and I believe Lawson Peel is not going to be your race leader but in fact the 25 of Daniel Micho is one thing that caught my eye there was the fact that Jaden Porter and Porter pitted also pitted so he's back in seventh place so he doesn't join Lawson Peel for the strategy of staying he gained out spots, though. and Daniel Micho Francisco did not pit at all so he is on 21 lap old tires we don't know if he's going to second guess this decision but for now, the sure answer is that Daniel Mitchell is staying out and weighing the consequences, I guess, in, in the meanwhile, as he'll take over the race lead. Probably wanted the lap led. That's, <laughs> I mean, that, that would be nice, but we'll see you here as we cut round turn 10 if he decides to make that trip into the pit lane, Kenneth. But it's interesting that Porter did pit. He ended up gaining net positions as there's the 25 not pitting. He faked this out for just a brief second. So he's going to stick with this strategy as we'll take the one to green this time. But Jaden Porter, Kenneth, he gained spots out of this strategy. He came down pit road possibly to top off on fuel. We saw uh, the gap they had to race cars. So obviously he probably didn't take four tires here, but considering he did just a handful laps ago, is now compensating with some fresher tires. Actually, he's going around these guys right now. So I'm not exactly sure if he got lapped in the process of trying to get around actually no there he is right there it's actually putting up hitting up closer to the field so if he pitted he exited in front of everybody because he's now ahead of Hawken and so this is going to mean extra work for Brandon Hawken to weave through traffic in the second part of this race there's the 75 of Nicholas Mazzuzzi a pretty beautiful Ford Mustang he's bearing tonight he's one of the five drivers that was a part of that OG Season 1 Sonoma race back in June of 2020. It was a 45-lap affair. And Vizuti actually was the best finisher out of the other regulars in this series. He finished fifth. Meanwhile, other active drivers, Austin Reedy, Brandon Gillis, Cody Ivey, and Tyler Murray, finished behind. So there is Vizuti just uh, getting himself settled for the next restart. And here is the storyline. Daniel Michel is going to stay out on 22-lap old tires. We know that an, a pit road stop anticipates him at some point throughout the race. We don't know when, but the fact that he is the only one really to stay out, it's really going to affect him as everyone else has fresh tires. Lawson Peel on the outside of the front row. Then Joe Sanchez and Jaden Porter file out road two. This is going to be three of the top four with Drinking Bros Racing Chevrolets. Brandon Hawken, who led every single lap up until now, is in fifth. Ethan Fonseca Moreno back in sixth. Luke Kadup, Lance Hill, AJ Green, and Kyle Benson through the rest of your top 10. Now, the good news for a lot of the guys who fell back in the opening 20-lap run is that this caution brings them all back together, a fresh start after they've taken some pretty decent notes over the course of the night. So, Michel will round lap. the field out of 11. Lawson Peel to his outside, ready for the green flag restart. Well, it appears we'll go an extra lap. Yeah, I don't think the field was fully caught. That pace car is moving, Kenneth. It's out here looking like a safety car with how fast it's going around the racetrack. Well, also, too, it is a Porsche. We do we do amplify the horsepower a little bit. No diss to the iRacing official pace car, though. Great car. But the yes. Porsche does have more power. It's a little flashier, so I guess it could go a little faster around the track. You know, I was going uh, home today, Kenneth, from the Tamiami Airport, and as I was getting on the 826 highway, 
there was a Mustang with absolutely no exhaust, and you could probably hear that thing from a mile away from how loud it was, and that's a thing of beauty. Straight pipes, baby, straight pipes. A lot of people here do that with Mustangs. Yes. Some Camaros, but I don't see it often. I've on seen Camaros. it. I've seen it with a Crown Vic before. Oh well, yeah, that makes a lot. Of, especially the, it has to be the old police interceptor Crown Vics. It can't be yes, anything exactly, else. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Sometimes we wish we had some of those classic cars here on iRacing. Can you imagine if we raced Crown Vics? Oh my! Imagine having a, a street car in the sim. That would be something else. Uh, I know. I know. Uh, Project Cars and. Forza have that as options, but imagine not having it here where you can just tell these guys, hey, get in a bunch of, uh, I don't know, Toyota Priuses and race around no, here. Oh, no. You lost me. You lost <laughs> me there. You really lost me. I think the closest car we have to a street car is either the Volkswagen Jetta, the Pontiac Solstice, but if we're talking modern releases on the same, it has to be the, the Miata 86 for sure. Or the Miata, yeah. Uh, yes, the Miata is definitely one of them as it's a very common car. It's the I, w I would say it's the, the 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 sort of average street car, if you will, because it doesn't have a lot of power. It's a sedan style car, so me personally, I would say the Miata is definitely on that list. But for on to more important things after that nice little chat is that we're getting ready for this restart. The field is going to stack up into turn 11 for the slow corner, and then out of the hairpin, the field is in the hands of the 25. When does he decide to go? Oh, he's already under his way, and he's going to clear Lawson Peel on the front straightway. The green flag is waving. The top four have kind of broken away. Michel's going to be clear as they break for turn two. This restart is all going to be about Daniel Michel's survival on 24 lap old tires. For now, he holds still four tenths of a second over Lawson Peel going back up the hill this time to the left and right handers. Michel has the advantage a bit loose up the hill and cresting as he goes through turn four. Lawson Peel and everybody else single filing out through about the top six. Our first side by side battle is beneath the top 10. There's Lance Hill and Kyle Benson shortly going blow for blow. We're going into the hard breaking corner. So far, it is all Daniel Micho as Brandon Hawken finds his way to third and Luke Canup going door to door with Joe Sanchez through the S's. The 21 does not want to see this right now as he's lost sight of that 12 car and he's behind a couple of cars that he was ahead of previously so he's hoping to see if he can get by them as quickly as possible and start making inroads on your top three as that's where he hopes to be battling a look on board with Hawken entering turn 11 and how much he gains on the top two leaders he sets laps in blistering pace compared to everyone else Moreno in a fight he's side by side with his teammate Luke up and there's another team wow. behind in Jaden Porter the trio moving up through the field that last sector by the 21, he gained three spots and he's now up to a fourth, getting past all of them. So <laughs> I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but a good job to do exactly what I said. He had to roughen up the race car a little bit though to get through, has some scratches on the right side of his Camaro, but his task at hand is catching up to the top three. There are nowhere in sight until he crests over this hill. And there's Brandon Hawkins wasting no time to get to the back bumper of Lawson Peel. Question is, how much does Peel battle Hawken? He knows that's going to be a battle for the win. The 98's the, the fastest car here. The thing is, you're kind of limited as far as how fast you can go because of the 25 being in front of you. Depending on how long Michel decides to stay out, is going to impact this battle. It's going to force them to cluster up as he is slower with the older tires. It's going to be interesting to see when the 25 pits, probably trying to make this a one-stop race, which would buy him the track position to do so if that's what he's aiming to do. But we'll just have to see how it plays out. The 12 slides through the final corner. Hawkins not going to make the move, not yet anyways. And they're going to live as a 25, very wide in the hairpin. Peel trying to see if he can get ahead, and he does. This is the change for the race lead. A lap 25, Hawkins is going to switch over and move to the inside. Better entry to the corner, going up the hill to turns two and three. Peel has the race lead, and it's sort of weighing your options if you're wow. losing Peel, because this will be the race for the lead going up the hill. However, Hawken is a non-playoff driver. As long as Peel stays ahead of the rest of his playoff competition, his worries really aren't plentiful. That was a close call between Brandon Hawken and Daniel Michel in turn two. I, I thought the 98 was going to get some kind of contact and gets set into the 12 car from how close that was, but he survives, and now he's taking a charging look around the outside. Is he going to try the crossover? Hawkins plants, turns the corner, but is not enough 
to get to the side of Lawson Peel wants to power around the outside. This is all in the attempt to set up for turn 11. Peel holds on to the lead for now. About half throttle through this left-hand section of the course. Then the fastest corner on the racetrack, turn 10. The dive to turn 11. We saw Peel a bit loose there. The last time we entered the corner, down through the rut and through the braking zone. Hawken is there, filling the rear view mirror. He stays behind and Lawson Peel's gonna hold on for at least another lap. But the good news for Daniel Mitchell is that his strategy is sort of paying off. He's keeping touch with the top three. That, he hasn't had that much fall off despite the old tires on his race car, so credit where credit is due. And certainly by the look of it, that's his strategy call, is to try and make this a one-stop race and try to get at least to lap 30 and then bring it down the pit lane and try and split this race in half and make sure that he can probably get a top three finish. I mean, he could do it, but it just depends on how the traffic works out in his favor after he comes down pit road. And the discrepancy on fresh tires is how exactly that's going to work. But we saw Daniel Micho propose the same type of strategy, Francisco. If you look back at season five at Road America, how did that pan out for him? He got a little bit lucky after Lawson Field win. made two consecutive mistakes in turns five and six. But if he didn't employ the strategy that he did to be on a different run than everyone else, he probably wouldn't be there in second, there to take his first career win. So. But Daniel Micho, I kind of like this call, Francisco, going ballsy in comparison to everyone else and being the why not driver of them all. Why not? He's not in the playoffs. This is the best time to do it. And here's Hawkin, dive on the bottom in turn 11, forces Peel wide. He's loose, going up to the gears. Hawkin is there, side by side for the lead momentarily. Hawkin, the crossover, going to turn one. And Peel's loose on the front straightaway. How much does he battle this into turn two? Up the hill, Hawkins on the outside. He plants, he pivots, he turns the car, and he gets the best of Peel. For the moment, he clears the 12 for P1. Fantastic power out move move. to the outside. Around the outside of turn two, that is a, not an easy move to accomplish there, but the speed and the, and the braveness to go around the outside and have confidence that the car will have the grip to get it done. And that all the way, and that started all the way back in turn 11. He he, fit, he forced the 12 to go just a little bit deeper into the corner. It set him up for that exit, and it, that's what carried him all the way to turn two. He was playing Eminem in that race car, going round the outside, round the outside. <laughs> As here's Moreno, who slowly caught up to Daniel Michel in third place. And meanwhile, the top two going to battle. It's forced Moreno just a little bit closer to them. It's a bit of high spirits here for Moreno, but his real target isn't Brandon Hawkins. We know that, of course, a race driver would like to win, but in the case of the point standings, Moreno was eyeing in on that 12 car. That was our motto going into Daytona, was just if you're any one of these guys behind Peel, beat him on the racetrack. You don't need to win the race outright to be considered the winner of the week. You just have to be in front of the 12. For Moreno, that's really his strategy, although he's held up here by Michel, and the gap is growing between himself and Peel once more as the top two have gone nose to tail. And Lawson Peel has now led laps in this race, which gives him some bonus points that the 21 does not have. So it these are things that are working against him at the moment. He, He's going to have to find something, do something different, or hope for some luck on his side. Because as the way it, at the way it's going right now, he's probably going to have to chase down that 12 car for the next 30 laps. But before that, he's going to have to consider how is he going to get by the 25 of Misha as AJ Green almost gets into the back of Lance Hill. But now they're going to be side by side in the turn seven. Hill was skying high at the entrance to turn four. And AJ Green is going to get the run out of the corner in order to beat the one car out. So AJ Green moves up to eighth place and the fight for sixth is up for arms. There's the 38 of Kyle Benson leading Jaden Porter who has made solid progress throughout this race. And we sort of had questions, Francisco, at least internal questions as to how he would perform, especially after that qualifying effort. Well, really the response has been prominent. Started back in 17th and the Kentucky native is up to seventh. Very good drive and that, that pit strategy worked in his favor as you see a car on pit road. I believe that is Daniel Michel. Indeed it is. That is the 25 exactly at the halfway point in this race, Kenneth. So he is trying the one-stop strategy. He's cutting it directly halfway. A lap 30, the clean 25 Chevrolet will hop onto pit road. It's really going to be about when everyone else comes down pit road, the distance and the discrepancy of fresh tires. And just how much 
Mijel is able to gain on the other drivers through the field. He's going to hope that he doesn't get lapped, but we presume that he won't just because this track is so big. But it's about how he can gain the positions through the top 20. We do have to tell you about some of the DNFs that have happened here at Sonoma over the course of the halfway mark of tonight's race. Christopher Bishop is 24 laps down and out. So is Skybox Racing's Kevin D'Elia. And a driver that you did not see as of late and was here up in the top five through the race, at least through the first 20 laps, was Joe Sanchez. He is out and apparently hit the disconnect button six laps ago. So he is back in 24th. And up front, you see the battle between the top three right now, Hawk and Peel, Moreno. And you look back at the driver, the 25, where does he cycle out in this pits? That's when he exited out of lap ago. He was in the 20th spot, 37 seconds back. So that's where he is right now. He's going to cut into that lead, obviously with the fresh tires, but what's gonna cost him time more than anything is getting through these cars in traffic. Uh, just how efficient can he get by these cars? You see that's the Craig Parks machine in front of him. It should be gener generally easy here going into turn 11. He'll break just that little bit later, and I think Parks will see him coming just that little bit faster, and he'll give him that lane, goes all the way to the outside, and in fact hits the tire barrier a little bit. But that's how you lose as little time as possible. Not every pass is going to be that way. And here's another driver on pit road. Surprisingly, Lance Hill is hit, but Trevor Haley comes in right behind him with heavy damage. So drama between the two cars. And this might have been a crash. Interesting development here. You see the front end gone on that four car. And it's been gone for a while. So it, it, it's not something that happened just a moment ago. And you see right here what looks like a moment that happens off of turn 10 was just ahead of Ryan Pandicio. He's going to hop on the brakes right here. I would say that's a case of wheel hop. The car doesn't even brake nor turn, and that's right in front of Craig Lounslager, Colin Forrester, and the nightmare continues for Trevor Haley. He's going to have to putt around with the damage that he's got on his number four machine. He comes into this race 48 points behind the championship leader. A look on board with Haley. Oh, that sounded different listening back to the audio now it sounds like he broke just way too late or the throttle got stuck because normally you want to break where those yellow dashed lines are as soon as the corner exits I, i'll point it out here on when we go through the camera so right as you get past this building those yellow painted lines right there you want to break sounds like he breaks just before those yellow ones for the pit lane entry he breaks way too late and then he takes notice of it he wants to lock them up and turn the race car to avoid heavy contact but he's Penalty not for Lance Hill. To there's Daniel Mitchell, Patrick Thompson, Craig Parks, and yeah, you're right, Lance Hill also suffering the same consequences. That looks like a penalty when he entered pit road because that car's been sitting there for a while and there's no damage, so something wrong with that one car. So here's what happened to the one car of Hill who's been sporting the Sam Mayer paint schemes for a little while, changed manufacturers from Ford to Chevrolet, rather Toyota to Chevrolet. And there's Hill into the corner behind AJ Green. Just cooks and hits the tire oh. barrels on the inside. And that's going to do the suspension damage for you. You see right there, he's dealing with it. Look how sharply to the right that right front tire was. That is a nasty hit there for Lance Hill in the one car. And, you know, we talked about those inside tire barrels. They can be dangerous when you hit them, and that's exactly how dangerous they can be. So we had two different instances, both in the same corner, Francisco, in turn 11, where Haley hit the outside barrels and the tires. Meanwhile, Lance Hill going to the inside. So really tough scenarios for both of them, but the biggest hit is going to go to Trevor Haley, which we imagine Francisco already, if it isn't decisive enough to take him out of the championship hunt, this ending here at Sonoma will not do him any favors heading into Dover. You're right, it won't, but... It was already a very bleak situation ever since really the drop of the green flag at Chicagoland for AJ Green. Kenneth just has not been the playoffs he hoped for after running a fifth, sixth for most of the regular season. And it's just not been the playoffs he's hoped for. Had the a solid run going at Daytona, just didn't get the result he wanted. Just at this point, he wants to try and capture a win and build, move on to next season. His best run of the playoffs was at Richmond about two weeks ago where he came home in fourth after starting third. That was the typical fast A.J. Green week that we're accustomed to seeing throughout the playoffs, but he's just encountered struggle after struggle. And then last week at Daytona, 
also didn't do him well where he finished 19th involved in pretty sizable hits like most of the field did throughout the rest of that nine caution race of the world center of racing but aj green the season three champ might just have to start focusing a little more on next season it's more so about how he can just muster whatever he has left versus if he even has a realistic championship shot at homestead of miami he runs seventh right now which is a pretty decent standing but he does have more playoff drivers to beat and speaking of playoff drivers if we look through our top 10 we've got everyone but three drivers so seven of the top 10 francisco currently playoff drivers and one of them in the top 10 now is craig lounslager who went through an opening lap spin and is up to ninth that's a good recovery there for craig lounslager to go from spinning on the first lap and being last at one point to being inside the top 10 here in the second half of this race working on trying to get eighth from ryan pandicio if lounslager could keep this up to the end of the race that would be a pretty good solid run to try and give himself a chance to aim for that top five position in the standings. Mountain Slogger is 49 points beneath Lawson Keel heading into this week's race. And there's Ryan Pandicio, who's tied with him in point standing. So these two are just sort of going for the tiebreaker, but also just looking to get some good momentum. They've had some decent races tonight. Quick pass for Mountain Slogger through turn 11. Pandicio is going to stay there. So how about this door to door bout for eighth place going up the hill to turn one. And you can see the flames coming out of the exhaust, even on the straightaways from how loose they get. Pandicio almost forces the 13 into the grass there, entering turn two. And they're going to make contact there off of turn two. And they're going to be side by side going into turn three. Pandicio is going to fight it on the inside. It's going to get tight there, but the 13 does have the spot. I can tell you it's not easy to go up through the hill and through all of these corners while going door to door. Pandicio wanted to cross over up the hill through that right hander but could not do so and there's colin forrester for the taking just in case pandicio scrubs off any more speed forrester is going to be there for the attack so these three cars will keep an eye on them as we progress but meanwhile 35 laps in this race is all brandon hawkins who got by daniel moore the lapped machine and he is 6.2 seconds and growing ahead of lawson peel back in second and it's about two seconds before you get back to Moreno this three-prong attack here at Sonoma 36 laps in and we are still awaiting Francisco when they come down pit road to which I ask you when is the right time to come down pit road looking up says now 45 was in a battle with Kyle Benson and he comes in by himself looks like nobody else is going to join him there Francisco but for everyone else is is there a right time to do it it depends on what on who you're racing and what lap is it really if you're the 21 of ethan fonseca you might wait a little bit but you want to be on pit road before this 12 car and use fresher tires to either get closer to him or get in front of him entirely because ethan fonseca knows that's his battle he has to consider what to do to get in front of this 12 car one position considering the bonus points lost and fuel's gotten today might not play a factor but you have to limit the damage. You have to make sure you negate any advantage that the 12 car gets to essentially give yourself another chance next week going into Dover. It's what we saw not happen at the Rockingham Speedway. He went for that win, cost himself a couple of positions. And, and that's really what this the mentality is during these playoffs is do what you can to limit damage and make the most out of the day. And on road courses, most importantly, Francisco, you have to limit mistakes. There are so many corners here. This track is pretty slick as is, and all the corners really don't resemble each other all that much. So you're looking at a different approach to the corner each and every lap around this Sonoma Raceway and to where mistakes really give you lost time over the course of the lap versus an oval where sure if you lose time yeah you do in momentum but you get the lap done fairly quickly you can just reset come the next lap and then get back on track but for road course racing it could be very easy to get off balance and then continue to make mistake after mistake after mistake there's Hawkins who leads now by about seven and a half seconds we're coming to 23 laps to go from the virtual Sonoma Raceway. Closest battle on track is still for eighth place. Pandicio under fire from Colin Forrester. Craig Lounslager, who was ahead of these two, has pulled away. And note that Daniel Micho, after his pit stops, has not really made any inroads in, re in relevance to your race leader. He's kind of maintained 37 seconds the entire way. Obviously, everyone still has to pit. But we'll see what that cycles out to if the, the 25 gets 
in front of the 98 after pit stops if he's behind that'll play a huge role we saw it was hard to pass for those guys when they were stacked up behind them so Michel obviously trying to see if he can push enough in order to get in front of the track position battle and see if he can hold off Hawk into the end but of course to do that he has to make sure he cuts into the lead that the Hawken has already and it's going to be really hard to do because it has eclipsed nine seconds on the racetrack and as long as Hawkins stays ahead and continues to log in laps to what's about a second and two tenths faster than everyone else, it is going to be much, much harder to beat the 98 of Brandon Hawkins, who continues his dominating race tonight from the virtual Sonoma Raceway, where we will take a short break and we'll be right back with more coverage of the four wide racing TJ's team series and the playoffs from California. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series in officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome back to Sonoma Raceway. Coverage of the 4Y Racing TJ's Team Series playoffs is brought to you by iRacing. To get your sim racing career started today, go to iRacing.com. By TJ's Team. To learn more about the Foundation's mission to end pediatric cancer, go to wearmorethanacape.org. And by Paul's Setup Shop. Welcome back to Sonoma. It's been a lot of fun here at the Cable and Racing Network alongside Francisco Bacchiao. I'm Kenneth Bueno. There's an overhead look at your race leader by 12 and a half seconds. It's the Canadian Brandon Hawken, who's looking to go two for two on the road courses in season six. But Francisco, we had some takers on pit road, including third place, Ethan Fonseca Moreno. And we documented this just before the break, Kenneth. That's something he should do in this battle with Lawson Peel. And right now he's doing a good job, but he's going to slide there behind Brandon Banks, who's going to go into the pit lane. That's going to frustrate the 21 just a little bit there. And losing that time, all that, all this time is going to be crucial for him to hope to make the pass on the 12 car. There's Kyle Benson sliding through turn 10. Does not hit the pit lane this time. He's going to keep going and wait a little bit later. And the 12 car did make his way down pit road. And he's now behind 
Ethan Fonseca Moreno. So a good stop and a good time out there on the racetrack gets him just in front of Lawson Peel. That is a perfect execution of the undercut. This is the difference of one lap on going down pit road and we still await Brandon Hawkins entrance. We know Craig Lautenslager who's moved up to a race high second is coming in. And then we know Daniel Michel, well he proved the half and half strategy. He's gonna stay out for as long as God is gonna will him to get to the checkered flag. So Daniel Michel is gonna be third. We should expect him to take away the race lead depending on circumstance. But here is the battle for fourth place, Moreno and Peel. Now the question, Francisco, is how hard do you push if you're Peel? Is it necessary with 20 to go? That's something that only he knows. He, he knows he's the championship leader and that's one of the guys he's battling with in this championship for in the position in front of him. So the question Lawson's probably asking himself is, does this position matter to me? And if the answer to that question is yes, he is going to push as much as he can in the next 19 laps to cap to catch up and try to go for the win. Hawken exited pit road and it is not even close. That gap between one and two. Misha will be in the second place position with 19 laps to go. Brandon Hawken with a huge margin. And at this point, it's gonna come down to either mistakes or some kind of lap traffic because that 98 has the pace. It looks like he will run away with this thing if mistakes don't come about or if Hawken doesn't disastrously end his race. And this is really going to be the marquee fight, Francisco. It's going to be Moreno and Peel because as of tonight's running here at Sonoma, these two came into tonight 11 points apart. Peel, the championship leader, Moreno sitting back in third. And with Kyle Benson having his situations and sitting back in P6 with his entry to pit road along with Jaden Porter, it has helped these two guys get away from Benson and company and also come closer as a result and they're going to get right to the back bumper of Daniel Michel and this is going to be the ultimate test Francisco on Moreno how patient he's willing to be one but when he gets around Michel too that but we also know that a lap led bonus points probably not coming the way of the 21 as he's going to go for the move very late in the turn 11 almost gets into the right rear and he is going to make that contact almost gets into the tire barrier that goes to show a little bit of impatience and that it invites the 12 of Lawson Peel and also was a product of teammates working together Michelle and Lawson Peel are part of the drinking bros racing camp Michelle is making it as hard as possible for the California driver to get around the fellow California driver. And meanwhile, what has allowed Lawson Peel to inch little by little closer to that 21. They're going to go up the hill. Moreno remains behind Michel. He has to be patient. But at this point, he's going to be playing offense and defense at the same time. And that's a terrible feeling when you have to do that. But at this point, you have to prioritize that 12 car not getting by you if you're Ethan. You know what that means as far as championship. And he's going to, again, look to the inside. Michel's just barely going to give him any space at all. And again, Lawson feels right on his back bumper. Michel continues to deny Moreno's applications of taking away second place. And he might just set up for turn 11 once more. Michel got the best of Moreno that time through the first bit of the S's. Now the fastest part of the racetrack, turn 10. And then the hard braking zone, Moreno might not get there to Michel as he hangs out the right rear. And now Peel is going to take on the attack. They're both going to stagger entering the corner. Moreno's there. Peel's going to deal in the bumper. The bumper. And I think he was trying the crossover move there because we saw him dart to the left just before they turned in for the corner, trying to get that arc. The 21 is able to place his car beautifully to hold on to the spot. But Daniel Michel playing the team games here, trying to see if he can gain loss and peel a couple of positions. And all the while, they're catching up to lap car Daniel Moore. So add another car that might add to the difficulty of Moreno getting around for second place. Up the road and up the hill is that 77 car of Moore. He still has Michel to get by. And then there are two more lap cars that these Chevrolets have to move on through. So it's going to get even tougher. Yeah, there's not going to be a shortage of lap cars between now and the checkered flag and when you catch them is going to matter and not everyone's going to make it that easy like Craig Parks did there or like Daniel Moore excuse me so you have to make sure that when you do catch them you're ready for anything a look on board with Michel continues to run second the look from behind at Moreno's charging number 21. Wide goes Michel in turn 10. Possible opportunity for Moreno to go back to the inside. He's going to have a chance. Peel's going to be there. They're both oh, going to go too. in. All three of them go in. Lock of the brakes for Michel. They're three wide. Moreno is spun around in turn 11. 
You did not like how that was going to look. They were going to try and go three wide. No spots lost yet for the 21. He's going to have his teammate behind him. But you could see that coming when Misha, when Misha went wide. Obviously, we knew the 21 was going to go for the move. Goes in there hot, makes the contact with the 25. But I think if the 12's not there, he's probably okay. But just nowhere else that Lawson Peel could go in that situation. Just kind of just run out of room. See right there, you see he flanks the move and thinks he's going to have the chance. Obviously tries to stay out of it, but then sees this and has nowhere to go. Just all those three cars did not fit into the real estate they were trying to aim for. And Moreno slid up the track in turn 11 as he locked up the right front. So basically just invited Peel to come in. And all of a sudden they make the contact. And Michel's going to let him go. Space. And even worse for Moreno, Peel is going to move on through. So it's going to add more points to Peel's benefit. And Moreno still has to get by the 21. But now is about 2.8 seconds back of the 25 machine. With 16 to go, the drama turning up. Yeah, you, you know, you know, somewhere inside that race car, he's not happy with what just happened. And obviously, probably has a perspective on it. But again, just really hard racing there for that position. Just not enough room for all of all of them to go into that spot. And Lawson Peel, your championship leader, already with the advantage with the laps led here tonight. It's going to get an increased advantage now after that set of circumstances. Here's a four-way fight for ninth. Craig Lautenslager getting around the fellow playoff car of Patrick Thompson, who runs a race-high 10th. And then here's Ryan Pandicio diving to the inside in turn 11. Thompson is going to generously give him the space, opens the door as well for Colin Forrester to swoop on by. So Thompson loses a couple more spots. That's a really big dagger there for Moreno. And then here for second place, Peel has fallen off to almost two seconds back of his teammate in Daniel Michel, while both of them have dropped off 18 and a half seconds, give or take, to Brandon Hawken, who enters turn 11 now. He gets around the lap car in Tony Kivett. And what a race this is stretching out to be for Brandon Hawken, who hasn't been able to lead every single lap like he did at Watkins Glen, which was a flag-to-flag -flag affair with no midway caution break. Hawkins still is going to hang his head high as long as nothing crazy happens for him. He's led 38 of the 47 laps tonight. Just a master class from Hawkins once again. I didn't know Max Verstappen showed up to race tonight. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, I know Max Verstappen is a chronic eye racer, but still. Certainly shades of him from just getting a pole, dominating, having the fastest car, and just pulling away from everybody and just dominating the show there you see Michel slowly getting caught by the 21 as they go through the traffic and I know that Ethan Fonseca remembers what happens and does not appreciate it he's going to try and see if he can get by this 25 as quickly as he can and see if he can catch up to the 12 car before the end of the race to try and get back that position we don't need a pretty big memory bank to understand what happened about a couple laps ago and Moreno is going to be feisty and getting he's going to go for it Michel. again he's going to go for it here and he's probably not going to be afraid to use Michel up as much as possible he's going to deal in the bumper again going through the S's again the setup for turn 11 and there's Michel running wide Moreno has to back up he doesn't want to make it side by side at this juncture of the racetrack it's very difficult to go side by side and not get into each other some way or somehow they're catching up to the lap car Michael Nubra that one got very close that's Moreno a chance going to be hard on the brakes to the inside Michel was going to block him playing the defensive role Moreno shoves the 25 into the corner but to no avail oh yeah with every lap that goes by he doesn't get by that's certainly going to frustrate him even more Web defensive did Michel there and did not allow the 21 to get by. But he has to stay calm under this situation. Yes, he's going to probably lose out to that 12 car here today, Kenneth. But what you can't do is throw it all away. You have to make sure that you can at least bring this back in P4 at the very minimum. And maintain the gap to Kyle Benson, who runs in sixth place, who sits behind Moreno's teammate for Baca Al Bueno Racing in Luke and Up. So you got to cut your losses somehow if you're not able to beat Peel within the next 12 to 13 laps you might as well hold on to what you can but we know Moreno is not going to give this one up there's a lap car who gives way for Michel and Moreno once again this is going to be for turn 11 but every failed attempt that Moreno has on this 25 car is every lap that Luke Canup gets a little closer that could help because they're teammates and they can work together to sort of bully Michel out of the way but you never quite know 
Here's Moreno again through the S's. And he's certainly holding him up because Lawson feels now six seconds ahead. And we saw the 21 and the 12 had essentially matched speed. So the fact that the 12 car is this far there away, as there's the 21, he's going to go to the inside. The 25 blocked it late and he's going to go around. Michel for a half spin. Knopp set to go by. There's Moreno using every bit of Michel's number 25 machine to get through to third. And Michel's going to get oh, dunked no, it was Michel. by Luke Knopp. They both tangled going into the kick before the start finish line. Oh my. And it's all kicking off. A double take. Here's a look at the entry to turn 11. Moreno had enough. Michel tried to slam the door on Moreno. Does not work. Michel goes for a slight spin. A masterful job to avoid the tire barriers. But in comes Luke Knup with a head of steam. They're both going to make the contact as the space runs out. Yeah, it just looks like the 25 on, in both instances tries to see if he can shut the door. It just happens to shut it just that little bit too late. And, a, and he goes around worse the second time. You see right here, he's on board. The 21 dives, going to the inside. The 25 moves over. You can tell he's not all the way to the other side of the racetrack. The contact happens, and good job in not fully spinning the car out. Really didn't lose any positions. And then you see the 45, sees an opportunity, goes to the left. He's there. And, of course, the 25, uh, just no real space there. And around he goes in the middle of the front straightaway. You know, he's not going to be happy about that one as he had a top five run brewing and in one fell swoop through the final quarter and that kink to the start finish line, Michel drops to eighth place. And what a hit that was. Moreno had none of it. He was, he was livid. That's a frustrated oh, no. race car driver if I've yes. ever seen one. He knows the playoff situation. He knows he was faster than Michel too. It just hit a boiling point. And and I've been in that position, Kenneth. It is it it is really frustrating when you're there and you're in the middle of this intense battle, and you're plagued with these with these circumstances of whether it's non-playoff drivers or a teammate situation. Obviously, if it, if it was roll reverse, you'd probably expect the same thing to be going on. So that we really can't say anything about that. But at the same time. You have to just make sure you do what you can to gain the spots. And, of course, we saw the contact that happened earlier that sent Moreno around. And, obviously, was not going to do Michel any favors in terms of cutting him any slack after doing so resulted in a spin. When he went for that move on the inside, I think he was going to go for that move whether the contact happened or not. And here's another playoff driver looking to get around Luke Knopp. This is Kyle Benson in the 38 car. See, Knupp's pretty beat up, number 45, Toyota Supra, and on the entry to turn 11, Benson's going to spin Contact Knupp around. Contact, around goes He goes near the tire barrels. He gets into it at the exit of the corner. Kyle Benson just stuffing the rear end of the 45. Benson moves up to fourth. Man, it's all kicking off in turn 11 now. Not the worst I've seen in that corner in my history of covering, covering sim races here. But he almost split the tire barrier. Yeah, here's a look at it again. I don't know, it just looks like a little bit late on the brakes there for the 38. Gets into the back of the 45, who's probably trying to go defensive for a brief moment there. All right, that's right on board with Kyle here. He's obviously setting up for turn 11, gets the better run. Looking up gets loose off of turn 10, they both do. Kyle has the has the gap, and you see all of a sudden the 45, it looks like he comes over just a little bit at, at, at the same time, and that sends himself around. Oh, like I said, almost splits that tire barrier and was able to keep going, but he's going to hit the tire barrier, get damage to the front of his race car, and lose positions in the process. And that's going to move Jaden Porter up to sixth and might get an opportunity to pass Knup here in a couple laps with that damage. I know Knup has a pretty beat-up race car. The gap remains at 3.7 seconds between Porter and Knup while Benson is cleared away for fourth. And there's one thing I'm certain of, Francisco, is by the time this race is all said and done, Tyler Murray is going to come back from that cruise vacation and say, what just happened oh, yeah. in the race review? Exactly, and, and especially when it involves those championship contenders because there's been a lot to go on between them today. They have been physical as can be. A look on board with Brandon Hawkin who basically hasn't been around any of the drama because he's been so far ahead. Make it 21.4 seconds that he runs in front of second place Lawson Peel. This race, much like Kanye West, is a runaway. So we're quoting Kanye now. 
I think we are, yeah. Well, yeah, so all of the lights have been everywhere on the <laughs> racetrack except Brandon Hawkins from how dominant he's been. Well, I'd say that Brandon Hawkins' graduation from rookie upstart to dominating force has been fun to watch. And Tyler, nice Tyler tells us in broadcast chat, he tells us already asking <laughs> what's happening, boys. Wow. <laughs> oh, it happens that quickly, huh? It really does. And we had lap after lap carnage between playoff drivers. So much drama here at Sonoma. And this is exactly what we could have asked for, Francisco, at the return to Sonoma in over three years as AJ Green is going to go for a whale of a slide going through lap car Nicholas Vizzuti. AJ Green, remind you, is running in seventh right now with about eight laps to go. But this crazy race from Sonoma has been so much fun to watch. And Green is going to whip it sideways again out of turn 11. Doesn't want to do that too many times. Daniel Michel eventually will catch up, and that's another position. Another point that AJ Green could lose. And again, Nicholas Fazuti sits two laps down in 16, so Green really doesn't need to hurry up this effort on getting around Fazuti to get really close up the hill. AJ Green makes that pass, so all is good and well in lead lap car land. At least for now, it really wasn't. A lot of chaos there, and there's the gap between A.J. Green and the Kentucky driver of Jaden Porter, and up the road is his teammate, Luke Knupp. And like I said, with the damage to Luke Knupp, you could expect Jaden Porter to continue to catch up and possibly eventually pass that 45 and gain an extra spot here, which should help Jaden Porter in his quest to get up closer to that top four and trying to see if he can keep his championship hopes alive. And what a crazy race we've had here today from Sonoma, Kenneth, and if it doesn't, as if it couldn't get any crazier, we go to the Monster Mile next week. It's not going to get fun at all. There's Luke Knup going sideways in turn 10, but like I said, it's not going to be fun for a lot of the playoff runners to go from a pretty difficult road course making its debut in the playoffs to a very difficult mile track that's made up of concrete and has Miles the Monster staring you down and when you enter the front gates. You know, Jaden Porter is Wait. pretty good at running a Dover and concrete tracks in general, so maybe he's not generally concerned. He's a, he's a winner. He's oh, a previous winner in the spinner. series. That's the 45's going to go for a spin. A harmless spin there to the inside. Avoids the 28. J.J. Green's able to go around him as well. Canup still sitting there as now Michel gets by. So the 45's race has derailed. Here in the late going of the race, Jaden Porter moves up into the top five. But you're right, Kenneth. He's a previous race winner. He won back in season four, or, or, or season five, excuse me, in his championship quest. So Dover, a lot of good memories for him. He hopes to create another one next week to close in on that championship effort. And speaking of that championship effort, Kenneth, you expect Lawson Peel to have a double-digit point lead by the end of the night. And if that's the case, that means we're exactly where we were when we started, except now four races remain instead of the original nine. And it's going to come down to the crunch time, how you can dynamically change the course of your championship run from here to then Dover, then the two and a half miler at Pocono, then Phoenix and Homestead. It gets a little more normal when we get to the end of the schedule, but it's all over the place until then. And that could be the deciding factor of who's still mathematically eligible versus who's basically torn out of contention. Here's another look at Lawson Peel, who's about 22 and a half seconds off of the race leader, but he should have, like you said, Francisco, the points lead as long as he doesn't put up any mistakes in the next five and a half laps, give or take. He remains seven and a half seconds over Ethan Fonseca Moreno in the background. There he is from third place. And as we were looking back at Jaden Porter, this is going to be, Francisco, another top 10 run in the playoffs for the 28. While he hasn't been the standout driver that maybe we thought he would be as the defending champ, he's been running well for himself. Remember that second place effort at Richmond, then a top 10 at Rockingham, another top 10 at Chicagoland. The only non-top 10 run that he had in the playoffs was last week at Daytona, where Porter ended up 16th in all of the chaos. And here running fifth at Sonoma. And he was in the top five there on the final lap. Just happened to run out of fuel. So that's why he didn't get that finish. But otherwise, he certainly did the job done. As there you see Lounslock with some front end damage. That had to happen recently. Some rear end damage as well in that 13. So something happened at 13 a couple laps ago that resulted in that car being as heavily damaged as it is and losing all this time. But looking at, at the way the field is running, Kenneth, uh, Lawson Peel's only had the points lead in the single-digit range 
one time, and that was after Daytona, so he's it's probably going to go back up to double digits after this race. Uh, we won't know for sure, but if it does end up above double digits, it just goes to show the stranglehold he's had on, on this points. He's had a couple of runner-up finishes. The, he had the win at uh, Rockingham. It's been a very consistent playoffs. Despite the trouble at Daytona, he still managed a seventh place finish. And even the, despite the trouble at Richmond for that matter, where he ran out, he was running out of fuel in the final lap and instead of finishing in the top five, finished 10th. So, so that goes to show that not only has he been consistent, but also those bonus points from being the regular season champion have really helped out. I was about to say that, a product of two things. The bonus Smoke. points that he got at the end of the regular season and then just all the great runs he's had since then. You put him against the odds and Lawson Peel can defy them like we saw last week at Daytona. I believe the smoking car was Luke Knupp in the 45. I just wanted to double check and make sure just that was the case. It was in front of Lawson Peel and I just want to make sure whether that was him or I believe Lance Hill in the one. It actually was Lance Hill in the one who was smoking in front of Peel. There he is. Billowing smoke behind Colin Forrester. If only he would actually put oil down on the racetrack and they would slide like they did at Watkins Glen all those years ago. And he's still putting around the racetrack in front of Lawson Peel. So he's going to have to hope and it can get away from Peel sooner. That could create more drama. Hill is just trying to get himself to pit road in the first place. What's well, been a pretty abysmal run tonight at Sonoma with the hits that he's taken, and he'd certainly like to forget tonight's road course event. There's Peel going to the inside in turn 10, so no problem there for Hill, nor Peel. We should expect Hill to pivot to the left. He's actually going to stay out. He won't. Interesting. Not sure why he's staying out at this juncture of the race, but regardless, we are three laps away from the end of tonight's road course playoff event from Sonoma. And here are drivers falling short a lap. Ryan Pandicio a lap down from eighth. Daniel Michel next on the chopping block in seventh. And going to give way for Hawking. Incredible pace to lapped up to the top seven as Michel and Pandicio will now battle for that position. But that just goes to show how fast Brandon Hawkins has been. He's over 25 seconds ahead of Lawson Peel, who was the dominant driver on road courses in the next-gen car. Finished second at Watkins Glen, and he's going to finish second here again to the same driver, to Brandon Hawkins, who, if he's able to put around the next two laps, he'll come home a race winner once again in the four-wide racing series for his fourth time this season. He's one of those rookies that came out of nowhere and put on the gas pedal as soon as he entered this series. Such a fast driver. Races in the Road to Pro qualifying iRacing series while he's not running four wide racing events on Wednesdays. And most recently came off of a pretty good run at Richmond Raceway last Thursday. Brandon Hawken running for Nexus Esports in their collaboration with Front Row Motorsports. We know Brandon Hawken is an insanely talented race car driver and he's demonstrated nothing but that ever since he first set foot onto the scene here at Four Wide. And his first career win in this series was at the Watkins Glen International Circuit. Back in race 13, we covered that in our pre-race coverage. And ever since, clocked off two in a row at Texas and Iowa. We thought three in a row might be in the cards, but he did not make the Talladega race. And ever since, has been close, but has never gotten the win after Iowa. Actually had a shot at Chicagoland in the first race of the playoffs before Scott Healy got around him. But another masterclass set by Brandon Hawkins as he'll come across this time by for the white flag. And if Brandon Hawkins decides to run full time for a championship effort in season seven, Kenneth, he's definitely going to be one of those drivers you consider in that battle for the championship. I think you have enough notes and enough proof in the races he has ran this season and with all the success as far as winning and the good results and all the pole positions that he has what it takes to be a championship contender in this series. He takes the white flag to begin one final lap here around the Sonoma Raceway. Brandon Hawkins, Kenneth, has definitely proven to, to have what it takes in this series. And if he brings it around this lap, it will be a fourth win of the season. Second on the road courses. We'll sweep the road courses for the first time in series history. We'll hope we probably will see him again before the season's over. He's going to try to see if he can end up with one of the most wins in the entirety of the season, Lawson Peel does have five as it stands right now, so I think that's what Brandon Hawkins aiming to try and get between now and Homestead Miami Speedway. 
He's going to have a pretty decent shot at doing so. He's been fast everywhere we've gone. There's no reason why he won't do that between now and the final race of the season. But as he goes through the S's one last time, Kenneth, it's been cruising all night long. No real troubles for him. Played the strategy right. And he's going to enter the final sector of the racetrack with a healthy margin. Hawken is up by 26 and a half seconds. And to give you perspective about the last several laps, he's run a second or faster than everyone else behind. And as he rounds out of turn 11 for the final time, it'll be win number four of season six for the Nexus Esports number 98 of Brandon Hawken, who's victorious from Sonoma, California. No words to describe just how dominant of an effort that was by Brandon Hawken. At this point, it's not a surprise when we get to see him do what he does, Kenneth. And of course, he's finished and he's already celebrating, but we still have the exact finish going on behind. Lawson Peel is going to bring it home in second place after the drama with Daniel Micho and Ethan Fonseca and extend his points lead. Ethan Fonseca with another podium finish. But he is not going to be happy with what went down there in the closing stage of this race. And a huge recovery for Kyle Benson. He's going to bring it home in fourth. Your top three drivers in the standings finish second, third, and fourth. Your three highest playoff drivers of the night. And we should expect it not really to change all that much. Heading into Dover, there's Kyle Benson crossing the start finish line. Jaden Porter is the next driver in line. Coming out of turn 11, he will finish out the top five finishers as Brandon Hawken continues his celebrations. Shades of Watkins Glen drifting around every corner here at Sonoma after putting on a show to behold. Hawken with his fourth career four wide win and his second at the road courses. We talked about how we cut the road course schedule in half from season five to this campaign. Well, both of them won by this driver right here as Hawken will come out of turn 11. Final drift out of the corner. A wheelman effort for Brandon Hawken as he enters Paul Setup Shop victory lane for the fourth time this season. Petition for a drift series. How about that? And there he is celebrating in full now on the front straightaway. And again, a dominant effort by him to capture yet another victory on the season. Number four, that is. And he's, and he's going to try and see if he can get the magic number six. At least that's what the target is right now. S5 is the most. And he's going to blow the engine up after a very dominant night for that 98 Toyota Super. He breaks the tie with Ethan Fonseca Moreno on wins on the campaign. He's got four behind Peel's five. He wins this race by a hefty margin. Let's take a look at your full race results from Sonoma, California, and our first trip to this racetrack in many years. Brandon Hawken, the winner by 28 seconds over the Mississippi native of Lawson Peel, who after this race should hold the points lead still. Ethan Fonseca Moreno with a great third place finish and his drama there late with Daniel Michel and Peel was a sight to behold. Kyle Menson to come home in fourth after spinning earlier on tonight. Jaden Porter to round out your top five. So basically the top four in the point standings after this race, that's where they finish with Eric Schaefer not being in tonight's contest. AJ Green has a nice solid effort from Sonoma as he finishes in P6. Seventh will be Ryan Pandicio, the first driver a lap down. Brandon Banks to recover to eighth place. Daniel Michel on his unique and alternative strategy sort of got bullied in the waning laps and he ends up ninth. Colin Forrester to round out the top ten. Tony Kivett will end up finishing in the 11th spot with Jesse Pries finishing in the 12th spot. Craig Parks will finish in the 13th spot on the road course, two laps down with Nicholas Wazuti in 14th. Trevor Haley will finish in 15th with Daniel Moore rounding out in 16th. Craig Lounslager limps around to finish in the 17th spot. Luke Canup, who had a strong run for most of the evening, will finish in the 18th spot. Craig Rowe will finish in the 19th position with Patrick Thompson rounding out your top 20, 13 laps down. Here's the rest of the field as it stands. 21st is Lance Hill, 22nd Michael Newbrock, Curtis Kelly, Adam Alishire, Joe Sanchez back to the top 25. And then those who basically called this race over early, Kevin D'Elia, Christopher Bishop, and two of the drivers that did not make the green flag, Austin Reedy in the 34, and Cody Kinsey in the two, rounding out our 29 car field from Sonoma, California, and we are going to be joined by Brandon Hawken, who gets his fourth career 
for Wide Racing, TJ's Team Series win from Sonoma. We'll see if we can reach him from Victory Lane. And Paul set up shot Victory Lane. As a matter of fact, here we bring in Brandon Hawken with an absolutely dominating performance after the 60 laps is complete. Brandon, what a way to win this one here at Sonoma. And we knew that after Watkins Glen, after you're leading every single lap from 1 to 55, we knew that you were going to be a force to be reckoned with, but through practice and qualifying, we saw you slowly getting into your groove. As soon as you did on lap one, it felt like you never looked back. What was this race like for you? Man, yeah, that was a, that was a fun race. Uh, <laughs> I um, uh, did some uh, did some racing there at uh, in FTF GNS there on Monday, and um, I I saw the uh, that there was going to be a caution at lap twenty, and I um, yeah I <laughs> did didn't know if uh, like I, I made the wrong de decision there on strategy, and so I thought you know that this one I'm I'm just gonna um, pit pit on the um, on the caution, and uh, so I can have as much gas as I can get, and um, yeah we we had a had a really good run there, uh, especially especially on the restart that was a lot of fun with Lawson there, and. Um, uh, yeah, thankfully uh, nobody tried saving gas. It was it was going to be close, I think, but um, uh, it, it would have definitely would have been a stretch. But if if somebody could make could have made it work, it uh, yeah, that, that, I think that might have been the uh, the way to go potentially. I'm not sure because the, the tires did wear over time, but um, yeah. So it just <laughs> uh, just just uh, fill, filled her up there on the caution and uh, had a really good run, uh, really good restart there, and um, just had to just had to be patient there because um, uh, yeah, Lawson had slightly older tires. So they were going to uh, fall off eventually. And um, I, uh, yeah, he, he put up a really good fight there. That was, that was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, man, yeah, it was uh, yeah, fun, fun getting in the groove there. And then, uh, um, yeah, I just had, had, a, had a really good race and nothing, nothing went wrong. And nothing certainly went wrong. You were just on fire from the opening jump. Just talk us through the groove of this racetrack. It was the first time that we saw Sonoma in this series since season one in 2020 when a bulk of this field wasn't even racing. We only had several drivers that are active that could have made this race or did make this race tonight. So for you, how is it to get in that groove and get into that rhythm here at Sonoma? Because it's a pretty difficult racetrack. The track temperature is pretty hot and you've got different challenges to go through from one all the way to 11. So what was that like behind the wheel for you? Yeah, so Sonoma is definitely a, a, a strange track to kind of just like hop into, and um, it, yeah, it takes a few laps to kind of like learn um, like like how deep to break, where uh, which curbs you can run over, which ones you can't, and um, yeah, there, uh, with this car, I, I was actually surprised. I kind of wanted to avoid most of the curbs, um, so um, yeah, for for the most of it, uh, most part, I was uh, trying to stay off of them, and um, it, yeah, really kept the car nice and settled. And uh, once I once I figured out that stuff, uh, it was just kind of yeah. Yeah, figuring out the the braking markers and um, just uh, hitting your marks every single lap. That's that's really important with this thing because um, if you if you start uh, like wheel hopping, that that's really easy to do. And um, if or if you lock up the fronts, it's uh, the the tires really uh, they 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 don't like it at all. So um, yeah, it was all just about trying to be smooth the whole time and um, not making any mistakes. You keep it mistake free. You walk on 52 laps led out of the 60 completed here at Sonoma and you get your fourth race win of the season. What does that mean now moving forward? I know you're not a part of the playoffs, but you've got many tracks where we probably assume that you'll be fast at or in contention for the win at for sure. Dover, Pocono, Phoenix, and then Homestead. What do you make of those final four races? Yeah, so that's a really great group of tracks. Nice variety, and uh, Pocono. That's that's always been a really good track for me, and um, so I'm looking forward to that. And um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, home uh, Homestead. I think you said too. Um, that uh, that that's also a really fun track. We'll we'll see how the multi group works there. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, looking forward to the next uh, uh, the remaining races of the season. And uh, uh, depending on my schedule, I uh, I'll see if I can run the full season next year because it's been a lot of fun racing with everybody. And um, yeah, just. Uh, uh, look, looking forward to it, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys for the remainder of the season. Well, that might be a very dangerous statement if you make a full season effort in four wide next year. But Brandon, on behalf of the broadcast team, a big congratulations on the win here at Sonoma. Before we let you go, anybody in particular you want to thank for the run? 
for sure, as always, you guys in the booth, uh, everybody at Four Wide for putting this on. Um, yeah, ev everybody who showed up tonight. Uh, traffic was amazing. Thank you to uh, everybody who like they they were super cooperative and um, man, yeah, it was just a, a really good time. Uh, we had some strategy involved. Had uh, uh, like re really clean race overall, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, only the one, only the one plan caution there. And man, yeah, that was uh, that was some really good stuff. So yeah, just uh, hats off to everybody. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the next one. Well, Brandon, we certainly appreciate the time. On behalf of all of us at the Cable and Racing Network, another big congratulations on your fourth career four-wide racing TJ's Team Series win here at Sonoma, and best of luck as we head to Dover next Wednesday. Thanks, guys. See you at Dover. Brandon Hawken in the 98, almost flawless here in Sonoma, California. He takes his fourth career win in dominating fashion. Behind him is the Season 4 champ and still points leader in the championship, Lawson Peel. Francisco Bacchiao has him. Well, Lawson, it's been a – oh, we have Lawson now. Well, Lawson, it was a very eventful race there in the second half. Uh, you had a fast car. It wasn't as fast as the 98. You were able to bring it home in P2. I think the thing that most people watching this race want to know is what happened there in the middle portion there with uh, Michel and with Fonseca. Yeah, um, I was just talking to Ethan about that. So I hate that happened. Um Obviously, Daniel was racing him hard there, and his tires were a little older. And um, first of all, I was planning on going a couple more laps there before I pit. But when Ethan pit, um, I figured I had a chance if I came the next lap to possibly stay in front of him. And so I just decided to go ahead and try to do that. He he got in front of me. He jumped me. And so um, when he got to Daniel, you know, I was kind of trying to save tires and I saw that you know, Daniel wasn't going to let him by. And, um, yeah, he kind of had a bad S's on that lap and just kind of got out of rhythm going down the hill. And so I had an opportunity coming out of 10 with a little bit of a run and, um, tried to make the move. Cause that's, that's the only place to pass on this track. It's one place to pass on this track. So I tried to go in there and, um, I was not going to have the position on him, um, and so I was, I was backed out and clear of him on the entry, but they both slid right through the center. And so they both smoked their tires, slid up in the center, and I just rolled bottom right around the, the strip there, and um, then the hole just closed. And so I hate that happened. Um, you know, wasn't intentional, and um, we just had a conversation about it. So I think everything's good and glad he, you know, finished third and it didn't ruin his day or anything. So, but yeah, hard race. And I knew I wasn't gonna have many opportunities to pass him. And so was trying to, trying to see if I could make a pass there. Uh, we just kind of all came together. That's all part of playoff intensity and that playoff intensity continues to ratchet up. We go to the monster mile next week, a, a track you've found success at in previous seasons. What do you think you're going to need out of the Monster Mile to keep that double-digit points lead? Or at least they've updated the points now, so you have an eight-point lead on Kyle Benson, uh, 13 back to Ethan Fonseca. What do you need to do at the Monster Mile next week to keep the gap what it is? Uh, probably keep it out of the wall, uh, number one. And I think that this car is going to drive pretty good there. You know, there's several tracks that the A car, next-gen car, just does not drive very good at at all, like um, like Phoenix. Texas, some of you know, Dover. I, I don't know if I'd lump that in there or not, but there's several tracks where I do prefer driving this car, and I think that's one of them. So um, I'm looking forward to that. Um, my teammate, Brandon Banks, likes that track. Uh, Jaden Porter is really good on concrete for some reason. It's like a Nashville Dover thing with him. So uh, I guess Bristol too, but for some reason, he's he's like the uh, the concrete man. So he, uh, recall him winning there, I think, last time. So I'm sure he'll be pretty good. And, um, you know, I expected Ethan to be pretty good every week. So, um, you know, I've not had opportunity to race with him at a lot of these tracks. So, like, you know, racing with him at Richmond was the first time. And here was the first time I'd race against him. So I don't, don't really know what to expect. But I've learned to not underestimate him, you know, to always expect him to be just as good or better than me. So, um that'll be the case next week and was trying to keep that in mind tonight you know with hawking just driving into another zip code up there that that wasn't important and you know i was really racing ethan there so um just you know 
keep being consistent like I've been doing. And um, I think just not having the, the, the wreck outs and the bad nights, you know, is what kind of carries you through. And that's true. And already past the halfway point in these playoffs, Lawson, a lot of consistency, a lot of good runs, a lot of recovery drives, a lot of things make these championship runs possible. Who's been responsible for making this effort here tonight possible? Yeah, thanks to TJ's team for uh, sponsoring the league this year. Um, really appreciate them for doing that. And thanks to you guys for the uh, doing the broadcast, Cape Bueno Racing Network. Um, thanks to my DBR teammates, Paul Setup Shop, uh, Tyler Murray. Even though he wasn't here this week, he was uh, making sure everything was done correctly from afar. So appreciate what he does. And um, yeah, just had a... Um, a really you know fun race tonight with those guys i uh, got some opportunities just a couple laps to race hawk in there and then you know was able to battle ethan and have some fun so just to appreciate really all the competitors even the guys that I, I race hard against with every week you know without without everybody that shows up it wouldn't be as much fun so well we appreciate the time you take with us every week lawson and sonoma now in the rearview mirror the monster mile lays ahead we wish you luck going into the Dover. We hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. That's Lawson Peel, still the championship points leader after tonight's Sonoma race. We'll get into those details in just a couple of moments. Before we do that, let's turn over to the third place finisher of the night, and it is Ethan Fonseca Moreno. There it is. Ethan, third place finish tonight at Sonoma. But you really had to fight physically to get there. Walk us through your thoughts, your emotions, everything in those waning laps when you're around Daniel Michel, Lawson Peel, and then that run to the finish. I think I, I think it was a bunch of crap uh, what happened there, but um, nothing really positive to say. I that position was uh, meant a lot there, so uh, for the battle for the championship, this sucks because we got a guy over here whose teammates with them is over here getting in the way of the battle uh, in the very, very bad strategy, whatever he was doing, but just in the way. So, and still made it difficult for me to pass there for uh, probably because he knew what the situa situation was. So I mean, it is what it is, but just sucks. Just wanted to race it out there with Lawson. So yeah, I don't have really much good comments to say tonight so a lot of hard racing there but a really fast race car and it's third place tonight here at sonoma what was this one like to drive i know that a lot of these guys including yourself hadn't had experience at sonoma at least in this series context just because we haven't run it in many years but what did you take away from this run here at sonoma what it was like to drive and how you were able to overcome the, the uniqueness of this racetrack to have a fast race car in essence um one thing I, I uh, learned from this race for sure is you can't be thrown off your your rhythm because if you do, then you're going to mess up in lap time and lose all the time that you probably gain on the car in front. So unfortunately, that's the way it went for me tonight. But um, yeah, just saving tires and, you know, taking care of your stuff. Um, yeah, that's all. That's what I took away from tonight. Next up, Dover Motor Speedway for the rest of the playoffs and should be our second-to-last short track race at a mile in this postseason. Your thoughts on Dover, how you're going to perform there, and what your mindset now is like as you sit third in points after today? Well, um, Dover's been a good track for me recently, so I do look forward to Dover. Uh, hopefully running good there by the closing the gap, but... Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one to come back to. But yeah, Dover's been a, Dover's usually been a pretty good one for me. So I expect a good result there. Well, you still got a shot at the championship throughout season six. I know this one was a tough pill to swallow, but it's a third place finish. Regardless, Ethan, on behalf of the top three finish here at Sonoma, anybody in particular you want to thank? Uh, I want to thank the team, my teammates, uh, partners. Shout out to Austin Duran. Uh, for making this paint scheme for me. Uh, go check them out. Makes good uh, designs. And, uh, yep. 
Well, Ethan, as always, we appreciate the time. Congratulations on the podium finish here from Sonoma, and we wish the best of luck heading into Dover Motor Speedway next Wednesday. Yep, appreciate it. Ethan Fonsec and Moreno obviously not happy about how that race ended, but it's still third place, and Francisco, it is still good enough to keep him in mathematical range of the championship. With that, we'll take a look at the updated point standings after the wave of the checkered flag at Sonoma. And the good news, Francisco, is that Brandon Hawkins is a non-playoff driver, so he really doesn't have as much of an effect on this race. But Lawson Peel still ahead by eight points over Kyle Benson. Ethan Fonseca Moreno, 13 points back, and it appears everyone fourth on behind may be mathematically out of it. We're starting to shrink the playoff field very quickly. Yeah, if I were to draw a magic line as far as who still has a chance realistically and who is probably battling for a specific standings position, I would draw it between Jane Porter and Brandon Banks. Brandon Banks is 44 points out with four races to go. That's where I draw my line. Jaden Porter is right on that cusp. He needs a special run at Dover to be able to keep himself in that hunt for the final three races. But if, if, if he does not uh, perform to that standard at Dover, you may as well move, keep moving that line up. But right now, it's a three-horse battle between Lawson Peel, Kyle Benson, Ethan Fonseca Moreno. And you heard it in that interview uh, between with both of them, really, about what happened there and their perspectives on what goes down and I said this during the race I've been on on that end of the situation before and it's not easy it's not easy being a part of it it, it certainly frustrates you and Ethan Fonseca he voiced that frustration so he, uh, we'll see what happens when he when we go to the Dover Motor Speedway and how he decides to handle it there when we get to the racetrack and how he decides to race in that event and how aggressive he'll be going forward because uh, we're starting to get into crunch time and you have to start willing to do certain things because it's going to take that kind of what word i'm looking for the uh it's going to take that kind of determination that kind of effort to make something happen out of nothing as we start winding down these races so ethan obviously frustrated but he still has opportunities to try and make something happen and for the spirit of march madness we now enter the final four races of the season and we go next week at Dover Motor Speedway, a race won by a BBR Chevrolet. Last time we were there, it was Jaden Porter getting the win at the Monster Mile. Francisco, your quick thoughts about Dover and what we should expect to see then. I guess speechless after this race at Sonoma. But Dover Motor Speedway comes your way seven days from tonight. That is April 10th at 9 p.m. Eastern. You can catch all of the four-wide playoff action right here on the K10 Racing Network YouTube channel. So that would do it for our race coverage tonight from Sonoma, California. A big congratulations to Brandon Hawkins on his fourth career four-wide racing win. For Tyler Murray and everyone in the admin team and race council, for Charlie Byer, Keelan Belsha, and everyone at the Cable and Racing Network. And on behalf of my colleague in the booth tonight, Francisco Bacayao, I'm Kenneth Bueno saying so long from Sonoma. We're done with road course racing, but we shrink it down to face the Monster Mile next Wednesday as Brandon Hawking comes out of California victorious for the fourth time.